Welcome back to the channel, Baku Crew. It's time for another look at Bakugan Legends. I know it was delayed a little bit, but finally getting around to it in this video, I am going to be reviewing the final collection pack that I have. Um, I went ahead to save time and unboxed everything off camera. But for those of you interested, this set included a Darkus Auxilitar, a Ventus Talon, a Ventus Nova Pegatrix, an Aquas Dragonoid Ultra, the AA or Armored Alliance design with Baku Gear. So all in all, a very interesting set. I know everyone's really hyped over the Ventus Nova Pegatrix, and honestly, I want to see what all that hype is about because I haven't seen the stats or if I have unfortunately I don't remember them but uh, yeah just gonna get straight into it I have all the cards right here and starting off taking a look at the gate cards included we have a really cool one depicting Winton and Leah I guess getting attacked by a slugler there but minus 200 to Pyrus, 700 to Aquas, minus 200 to Ventus, 700 to Chaos, minus 200 to Arliss, and then 700 going to Darkus with a uh, Green Fist core symbol there at the bottom. Pretty cool gate card. Um, I have seen it before, so it isn't a new one once again. So after reviewing all of the Bakugan Legends product that I have, it looks like the uh, gate cards, at least for the first wave, of the year from this year um, will not be new uh, here is the second one and once again it isn't new unfortunately but I'm still hopeful Spin Master will release new gate cards this one I won't spend a lot of time on I have reviewed it a lot before so I will leave it up though like I've said before for those of you who are interested now the Baku core included we have a blue shield plus 600 B a regular or green fist plus 100 B and then Ventus and Aquas get plus three damage that's pretty good I don't have a whole lot of those a minus 400 B power blue shield a minus 300 B power and minus one damage helix so it's a trap core double trap cores there and then even better so this is a really good core again one that I don't find a lot of and it is Aquas and Darkus get plus 400 B power. So very nice Baku core included there. And then finally, another Helix plus 500 B power and minus one damage, which is one of the uh, better Helix Baku core in my opinion. Moving right along, because I just have to, I do want to take a look at the Baku gear right off the bat. So it is Aquas Cannon. It costs 2 energy for a B power boost of plus 100 and then plus 3 damage. Not bad, not for 2 energy, but even better. It has the added effect of if your Bakugan lands on a Helix, you get an extra 300 B power. So very good for Aquas decks um, with any kind of Baku gear strategy. Actually, this one works in mine very well since I'm using the Neo... Trox and then the Aquas Blitzfox. Um, definitely gonna have to consider running this card. It is really nice and even cooler. It actually features the uh, artwork of the Bakugan it came with. So the Aquas Dragonoid with the uh, the Aquas Cannon, I guess, right there on its back. So very cool, very interesting card. Not bad at all. I do like the uh, Helix Buff. That's new. I do believe so. Always like new cards. Again, that's what's huge about these collection packs. You get Baku gear, and that means new cards. Even if it is one, you have to take what you can get. And I am very happy about that. But moving along, though, I will take a look at the Dragonoid, because why not? Perfect thing to uh, go to next. So it has a Baku core line of a Helix and a regular Fist. Pretty interesting. B power of 700 with 2 damage. And then the exact same thing that we saw with the Aquas Hydrus in the last unboxing with the collection pack. Um, except this time it's with a Helix. If it lands on the Baku core, it has the Baku gear symbol. 
So I'm assuming that means you can play a Baku gear uh, from your hand on that Bakugan for free, like the active Bakugan. Uh, but I don't know. I can't confirm that. I don't know the rulings. I don't know if the rulings have officially been released. Um, if you do know, please drop it in the comments down below and help me out because I don't want to give out any misinformation or any wrong information, um, especially pertaining to the Bakugan Pro game, which hashtag we want cards. I definitely want that to re-release and flourish. So I want to get everything right, but assuming that's what it does and it just add, lets you play a Baku Gear card, very strong. And for Helix decks, I would certainly consider putting in Ultra Dragonoid again, this might be going in my Mono Aquas deck, so I might have a uh, update video of this in the coming week. But uh, yeah, really nice Bakugan here. Definitely worth considering using. Now then, here is the Aquas Dragonoid, which I never did have a Armored Alliance mold of the Dragonoid, so this is actually my first. And uh, looking at it, it's really nice. Um, it does have two manual feet here at the bottom, as well as the manual horn, which I think is so stereotypical of most Dragonoids. And then I guess the wings come out. Yeah, even the wings come out too, so even more manual pieces. Wings extend even more. So it's a very nice design of Dragonoid. And again, the uh, new paint scheme for Bakugan Legends seems to be a darker blue mixed with the light blue and possibly the addition of yellow I see it's been added for the eyes so very interesting and again we do keep the orange so Aquas did not change much at least for the Dragonoid and the Hydras anyway now then to close up the Dragonoid again first time so this should be a good laugh for everybody watching I'm assuming it's the head, wings, and then the tail last, because that's usually how Dragonoids fold. But I think I got that wrong. Maybe the tail first, and then everything else. Okay, I'm getting something wrong somewhere, and I don't don't know. The head goes down. Yeah, the tail. Okay, so the tail goes in first, because that was too hard of a click. And then you wrap the feet in, then the wings in, and then the backpack closes. Ah, there we go. So not too cringy of a moment there, but here is the Aquas Dragonoid Ultra folded. Jeesh, talk about Alto Bronte's disease. So this one does have some bumps here sticking out, so little protrusions there and there for the feet. Um, but again, the rolling location, there's the arrow, kind of sets uh, the points. You know, it sits it in the center, much like with the last Bakugan that had this that I reviewed. Um, so if you're rolling it like that, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, but again, that's just basic rolling straight. You know, the Jet Kuso way, I don't know how it would perform if you tried to spin shoot it or backspin. Definitely something to... Uh, Spend some time researching, I guess, later on. Different types of rolling techniques for Bakugan like this. But looks pretty nice. Minimal paint work. We have the design right there. And then, of course, the peg holes for the Baku gear. Really cool. Moving on, though. To the Darkest Auxilitar. It runs a blue shield and an orange shield with a B power of 903 damage. So this is just a solid vanilla Bakugan. It's not too strong, it's not too weak. Getting a plus 650 blue shield that gets it up to 1550, which is honestly really strong, but it doesn't have any bonuses or added abilities that set it over the top, which a lot of Bakugan are getting, especially with some of the leaks into Legends. So I feel like Auxilator might fall behind in that respect. Otherwise, I mean, solid B-Power. 1550 is nothing to scoff at. It's definitely worth considering in some builds. Um, of course, it has a shield, so shield decks kind of all over the place. Um, a lot of Bakugan use shields. Artwork, by the way, really nice. 
they're still using like that glowing energy effect even on the core Bakugan in the artwork. Just really cool for all of the Bakugan to see them like that. Really interesting. And here is the said auxilitar. So not a lot of paint at all. Um, the amount of black, it just kind of fades. And you can see it all blends in on the camera. But the teeth are painted the new light blue that this year's Darkest Bakugan are using. Um, otherwise, you have the very light, light, I guess, purple lavender color. Um, painted on the edges of the wings. Of course, the faction symbol. Again, colored. So faction symbols will now be colored. I kind of like the idea of that. Um, that is pretty interesting. And there are even some uh, dark, deep, like a silver gray added on. So that is a new color as well. That looks very nice. Otherwise, that's it on the uh, exterior of the Bakugan. Not a lot of detail. Of course, the B power there at the uh, tail. And then the only manual piece is a horn, I do believe at the top of the head yes yeah, so there we are and that is darkest auxilitar the same design from armored alliance as well they did not change this bakugan so to close it feet in i think the head oh no so the body goes down then the wings and then the tail locks everything closed and there is darkest auxilitar so really cool um, when it is closed, has a lot of patterns on the wings. It would be a great Bakugan for a, a custom because you could definitely paint more detail into this Bakugan. It certainly has it. Very cool. Now then on to the Geogon because I want to save that Nova Pegatrix for last. Here is the new Ventus Talon. So one energy to play already right off the bat, much, uh, much cheaper of a cost. Um, the original talent cost four energy to play. It has a B power of 600 and two damage. And then if it lands on a helix plus 900 B power. So this talent is a beast. Um, assuming you're using the plus 500 helix that gives you minus one damage, that's going to be 2000 B power with one damage so not a lot of damage to get through but with 2000 bb's you should definitely win using this geogon that is really good um, and that doesn't take into account anything else you're going to play with this geogon because again only one energy that's huge and then of course you have nanogon which could add more baku core for more damage more b power very strong so this is definitely um worth looking at um i would definitely play this at least at maybe two inventus builds i might have to look into finding another one of this set or uh, trading for this talon because yeah i'm serious i definitely want to pick up more they uh they upgraded talon like yeah definitely definitely awesome and again the artwork really great so all in all talon definitely got an upgrade um, it was needed. I felt like the last talent, you know, four energy, it just wasn't really that strong. I don't think. I could be wrong, but I can take the time. Sorry for all of you watching. I will go ahead and get out the old talent, but I have it right here because I don't want to just be talking out of my uh, the side of my mouth and not know what I am talking about. So here is the original talent. It cost four energy, like I was saying before, with a B power of 1700 and two damage. And then on Helix, it gets plus eight damage. So again, assuming you're using the plus five with the minus one, you're going to get up to 22, which it is higher than the 2000. Fair enough. Um, and then the damage you're going to be looking at because you do lose one is going to be nine. So you don't get the 10, but you will have nine damage, which... Higher damage, so at face value, this Talon, the uh, the Geogun Rising one, so the first one would be stronger, but I'm considering the energy cost, because that factors into it. The amount of value you get from this Talon for only one energy is much more playable than mid to late game, this Talon, 
with only four energy. Because yeah, you have 200 more B power, so you're sitting at 2200, but your opponent has more cards to play, which means more options to out your Geogon, and you don't want that. So even though this one's good, I'm not saying it's bad or terrible or anything, the, uh, the upgrade with the energy reduction, and it only costing one energy, definitely needed. And, uh, you know, there's a difference there. But, again, that is just my opinion. You can all take with that what you will. And here is the figure. So, this year, it looks like Ventus is getting a little darker. Um, I know for Evolutions, they lightened a lot of the core Bakugan. Um, but at least the Geogon looks like they are darkening the green used, or the main green. So you have a deep forest type color. And then they are still using the lime and the translucent emerald for the translucent plastic pieces. So still very nice. But it is the same figure. So to close, head in, body down, tail wraps in, this tail down, and the wings in. And there is Ventus Talon in little cube rectangle shape. Very nice. And again, colored faction symbols. So that is really cool to see. That faction symbols will now be colored on the Bakugan. And then last but not least, it is the Nova Pegatrix. What everyone's probably been watching this video and waiting for. So it has a blue shield and a helix core. B power of 500 with 5 damage. So, interesting enough, on a Helix, it's going to get a plus 600 boost, so very nice to B-Power. And then on a Blue Shield, you get to add a Baku Core from the field to this Bakugan. So, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from rolling your Nova Pegatrix onto a Blue Shield and picking up a Helix. And I'm almost positive that that's going to give you the boost anyway. Um, so, that's scary. Um, assuming it works like that, you know, you're looking at 650, 6, that's 1250, uh, plus another 5, so 1750, and that's not even, uh, you know, deciding which helix you use, which that's going to change however you pick. Um, wow, no wonder everyone wants this. This is a very strong Bakugan, and really good damage, so this damage supports using the plus 600 uh, minus 3 damage. Helix, because you'll still have, uh, you know, damage that goes through too. It's not a lot, but you're not going negative or zero, which you definitely don't want to do. And then uh, even using the plus 500 minus one helix, which that's normally what I use, that leaves you with four damage, which again, that's a pretty good amount considering what you're getting on the B power side um, of all those core. That is insane. Wow, what a Bakugan. So this is definitely going in my Mono Ventus deck. Um, and I just got the Ventus Platinum Blitz Fox too. So, wow. Really good. And I thought the uh, Evolutions Pegatrix was good because it was a Green Fist. This one, definitely the best. And the artwork is killer. Got the uh, glowing green there. All the emerald-like armor. Very cool. So very powerful Bakugan. Like if you can pick this up, if you find this set, I definitely suggest getting it. Uh, excellent Christmas gift, by the way. Just putting that out there for people. Very strong Bakugan. Spin Master, thank you. Um, competitive much? Like, yeah, this is great. Uh, great for the TCG. Honestly, great for the toy battling game even. Uh, because if you use the core symbols, yeah. You're going to get those bonuses more. Wow, really nice Bakugan. Now then, it's time for the figure. And here it is. So this is the Nova Pegatrix. Much like the Nova Ventus Nelius, that emerald green translucent plastic just looks nice. I mean, it really does. Really looks great. Minimal paint. On the wings here, um, just like the Chaos and Arliss variants of Nova Pegatrix, which again, just like Nelius, Spin Master chooses to pick two Bakugan 
released them three times in the first wave of Bakugan Legends. Very interesting uh, choice there, but it is what it is. B power on the back, 500. So very cool. Now then to see that light effect, here we go. And it shines very nicely, just like the others. Man, these Nova Bakugan, really cool. I'm uh, glad Spin Master is bringing back some of the uh, legacy gimmicks like Light Up. Um, and I'm definitely curious if they're going to uh, bring back uh, Wings a Little Loose there. But uh, definitely interested to see if Spin Master is going to be bringing back any more gimmicks. Um, they brought back the Heavy Metal or the uh, Platinum Bakugan. So the Special Attack Introduction of Metal they brought back. They've brought back the Trap Bakugan with Geogon. They've brought back the, um, the Bakugan Battle Gear, I believe, with Baku Gear. So they're bringing everything back slowly and reintroducing it into the game with improvements. And, you know, just like with the Nova Bakugan, they're bringing back lights. So now we just need the, um, the ones that threw dice, the attribute change, um, of course, it would be faction change. We'll need a B power change Bakugan with a roulette that, you know, it's, I guess, random, obviously. And then there was a few more. So there was the one that shaked, the vibrating one. You know, there was a bunch. You all know all of the special attacks that came out in the Legacy series. It was pretty crazy. I would list them all, but honestly, there was a lot. And uh, who can forget even the uh, Reboot's classic gimmick of Kloptor Ultra, and it shoots out its eye. Like, that is probably the best gimmick ever. And I don't think there was a Legacy Bakugan that shot out a piece of itself. Um, there was that one Bakugan that shot out, like, half of it. Um, I don't know if that counts, though. But anyway, Channel Mascot, Lightning Voltex. And it's time to roll out this Nova Pegatrix. Just to wrap up the video on a good note and test out the Nova lighting and the magnet. Because I like to see how these Nova Bakugan perform a little more than the other ones introduced. Just because these are the new gimmick of the year. And that magnet hit very nicely onto that core, as you all saw. Go ahead and roll it out one more time, because why not? And for those of you interested, the head's here, so Pegatrix rolls in accordance to the arrow, which I just added and I lost it, go figure, right there. So it rolls this way. And again, so a very nice magnet. Um, it looks like all of the Nova Pegatrix, just the position of where it's at right here. It just seems to hit very well. Um, yeah, and works really great. And again, the lighting is so awesome on these Nova Bakugan. Spin Master definitely doing an excellent job with the reboot, and I hope they keep it going. So that's all that there is for this review video. Thank you all for watching. For the rest of this week, I definitely hope to get out at least one or two deck profiles. I am working on editing all of my mono decks. No, I don't have a mono r -less. I wish. I'm close. I think I have like 27 or 28 Arliss cards, so I can almost have a mono Arliss deck. But anyway, I'm editing those out so I can get those updated deck profiles recorded, as well as all of the uh, Platinum Waves. I do want to review those, so those will start being reviewed tomorrow as well. But that's it. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for the continued support. If you're not, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now for more Bakugan reviews, Bakugan customs, Bakugan hunts, and monthly Bakugan giveaways. And there's definitely going to be more to come in the future as long as everything is going good, which it is. Because thanks to the Baku crew, I am currently at 866 subscribers as of recording. And that is a phenomenal number. I definitely couldn't be doing this without the support of all of you. So thank you all so very much. 
On that note, I do want to congratulate my fellow Bakugan YouTuber, Dhart. He just reached his 1,000 subscriber goal. Man, congratulations. I'm definitely happy for you. I cannot wait till I get there myself. It is the dream goal and definitely um, working towards that. So congratulations. Good on you. Keep promoting the game of Bakugan because it is awesome. And the more of us that promote it, the more the community will see it. They'll learn it and they'll want to play it. So that is the hope of me. I hope it's the uh, I hope it's what you want to do as well, because promoting Bakugan definitely is worth it. Until next time, everyone, stay safe, drum up, and Bakugan brawl.